is important. I will tell you what his priority is before I forget. Did somebody take it? Aaron, did you grab my poster? Oh, here it is. Um, he wants to have the dialogue, but at the same time, he's concerned about the citizens. And I don't know whether you've seen this, but this is a program that Chris's work, Senator, is working on. Um, it's it's uh, turn up the tips. The, the local economy has been devastated by this disaster. Devastated. And the pocketbooks it hits first are your service staff. I mean, we struggle to find a restaurant open here in town just to grab some dinner. Um, so he's got this program, turn up the tips, support local business, beat the spill, make an impact today, and visit your local restaurant, and over tip, just because they're going to be the first frontline folks to get hurt. And this is a program that, that Senator um, is working on. So, yes, sir. any difficult questions to, to any of these people at news conferences. So what is your advice to getting, um, so, so what is your advice to us, to get us to get our media to ask difficult questions, not stupid questions, like how do I wash my dishwasher afterwards? You know, you know that there's blue crystals in the water that add in the clean zones. Today on the news, they're not, they're saying you're drinking bottled water while telling us it's okay to drink the water. <laughs> I asked them ask ask five times on the news, when are you going to have them drink the water? Yet they're telling us it's safe and they never did. So somehow we have to get our news media to ask difficult questions to these people rather than softball questions that they've been asking. Great question. Um, what we have found works and it doesn't work everywhere and it doesn't work all the time, is to, if you ask good solid questions and you're able to email it in to the reporter that's actually doing the tough questioning, you get some pretty quick, good, honest responses. Um, there's a lot of reporters around here. I don't wanna, <laughs> I wanna be careful here. Um, they need to um, be loaded with those questions. I'll tell you, if I send in questions, they usually get asked. And you can do the same thing too. I mean, I'm, I'm nobody, you didn't know who I was 15 minutes ago. Um, so you can, you can ask tough questions. And if you put them in the right format, they're gonna get asked. Reporters generally want their questions answered and they can see a dodge. And so they'll go for it. Um, I, I will tell you, we were, we were flicking around at the hotel this morning trying to find out who was covering this the best. And that's the reporter we called one Saturday in order to get this information out. So it worked. So, yes, sir. Uh, as a person with an autoimmune disease, I want to know, is it known if this substance is neurotoxic? Is it known if this substance is neurotoxic? And uh, what are the riskiest modes of exposure? Like uh, skin contact, for instance, or inhalation. The, the honest, straight answer is the chemical's too new and there's been no research or studies. But based on the family of chemicals that it's in, um, inhalation and dermal, meaning in the shower. And a hot shower is worse than a cold shower. So if you get in it and you start breathing it, now the question of neurotoxicity or carcinogenic uh, and all those, there's, I, I would be misspeaking if I, if I told you that. I will tell you that um, when you start losing, the, the carbon chain starts breaking down, some of the chemicals in between on that um, have been, you know, benzene. Okay, if, if you could actually form a component much like benzene, and that is a type of neurotoxin that does cause types of effects that, that uh, in short term, meaning inhalation, long term carcinogenic. So it's just a, I'm not ignoring you, I'm trying to move around the room. White hat. Sorry, I'm gonna make you run. <laughs> I'll try to get it closer next time. Uh, yes, sir. I was just wondering, along the same lines, uh, judging from chemicals that are similar to this, uh, are there long-term like genetic impacts? Is it possible to, to carry this from one generation to another if there's been you know, exposure in the genetic line? 
Another really tough question. Um, I, I just don't know. I, I would, I'm gonna make a hypothetical guess based on these types of chemicals and say no. And say no. Um, but I just, I really, really don't know. You need to understand, um, Aaron was talking about um, how health effects studies are conducted and how maximum contaminant levels in our drinking water systems are set. Um, I'm gonna give an example that you'll understand. The maximum contaminant level for drinking water in the United States is exactly the same as it was when Aaron did the hexavalent chromium work in Hinkley, California. The maximum contaminant level has not changed. If you all remember the movie poster and the baby on Aaron's hip and she's kind of looking back over her shoulder, that baby has a baby now. That's Aaron's granddaughter that she was speaking of earlier. And they still don't have a maximum contaminant level for hexavalent chromium in the United States. And the occurrence rate for hexavalent chromium is in all 50 states. Now, the last administrator at EPA said, we're going to establish one, and actually bantered with the idea that she had the authority to, to just do it because there's one for total chromium, just not hexavalent chromium. And so, it, the, the, where I was going with this explanation is it takes 25 to 30 years to set a maximum contaminant level. And there will never be one for this chemical because it's so rare. They only set a maximum contaminant level in drinking water for chemicals that have occurrence around the United States. And frankly, this chemical is only used in this industry. So, yes, ma'am. Thank you all for coming. I just want to thank you all for coming. Aaron. I was wondering, right here. Erin, now you got to come up and answer a question. <laughs> well, I guess you can answer it. But, uh -huh. um, if you all live in our, with what's going on in, in, in the zones that are waiting to be flushed, and once we were cleared, how soon after would you all take a shower or drink the water? <sighs> Especially when you can smell it. If you all live in the zone, so oh. for our water to be she, she amended your question slightly, and I'll, I'll, I can answer it better with her amendment. Her amendment to your question is, especially if you can smell it. What? I'm sorry, I heard her say those things, she did touch on that. Yeah. But I'm saying as far as actually consuming it, getting in that water, body and all. I mean, if you all lived here, how soon after? A week, two weeks, three days? Some people are jumping in the tubs now. No. Well, they are. I know I no. mean, some of my friends are doing things. And I, I'm going to answer it from a science perspective, and I'm going to let Aaron answer it from a grandma's perspective um, and a mother's perspective. Be careful with that one. <laughs> um, I don't care if the chemical pollutant that was dumped was a, a boatload of ice cream. It's not supposed to be in my drinking water. It's organic, we don't understand it. I can tell you it's not a good chemical. It's not hanging out with good other chemicals, it's bad. The answer to your question from my personal perspective is I would not bathe, drink, or consume that water until they told me it was removed from the drinking water system. I think that them telling you the one part per million is a scientific, Guffaw, they have no more right telling you that it's safe than I tell you it's not. Thank you. Exactly. Well, because I, I personally feel like you said this has been a, a devastating blow to the economy, and you know, people are losing money, and I understand that, but it's almost like I don't think they're caring enough about us because mm -hmm. they're wanting that money. They want the restaurants yeah. open, yeah. they're exactly. putting some water right. for them, but what about us? I mean, they're telling us it's well, your zone is free, let's flush. Everybody's hopping in the tub in the showers and drinking the water. So what you what you want to say in your personal opinion is that you wouldn't do it until they tell us it's clear. They're not going to ever tell us it's right or it's totally free. They're not going to tell us I, that. I, I came up here tonight promising to behave myself. <laughs> 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 no. And, and, 